we are going to start with uh, Alain de Vulpin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. I'm really happy to be with you today. I know nothing about the Greek crisis, but I know that the Greek crisis is within a Western crisis, which is maybe within a world crisis. The crisis is economic, is political, is uh, financial, evidently, but it is also, and it is on this last point that I'm going to insist, it is also a deep societal crisis. Society is a living organism. Uh, we, we are not very much aware of that. Society is life. If you want to force life, it resists, or eventually it dies, or eventually it is paralyzed for a time, so it eventually wakes up after a time, and eventually uh, makes jumps toward more complexity and escape your uh, force you are putting on it. Social businesses, new businesses, they need to make money to make some profits to go on developing, but their aim is not to make profits. Their aim is to do good, to do good to society at a point or another. We see appearing now some new types of cooperation, firms cooperating together, firms cooperating with associations, uh, eventually with government authority, local authorities, to together build something different and do good to society also. There is another lively, living, interactive system which is beginning to work and which could change the situation and could produce the appearance of an, another system. Our economies have been, in the world, not very dynamic. Uh, the unemployment has raised to a very high level in a lot of our countries and is still very high. Work has lost its value. Work was meaning something. Work was a positive word uh, 30, 50 years ago. It's very often a negative word now. It is associated with uh, stress, with uh, harassment, with uh, burnout, with uh, suicide. The cr crisis feeds the movement, of course. Uh, ordinary people reject uh, financial capitalism more and more. They have become aware. More in some countries, less in other countries, but everywhere, including the states. I say including the states because the states are the, the fathers of, the, of this system, of this uh, form of uh, capitalism, but in the states the reaction is rather, rather strong also. Uh, senior managers become aware. We see more and more in the press uh, big bosses saying we, we need a genetic revolution in our company. We cannot go on working like that. The awareness comes. Gurus of the finance and the, the economy talk that way. Klaus Schwab, the head of Davos uh, uh, in Switzerland, the, the big Davos uh, forum, uh, wrote article in the press saying that uh, bosses should not work anymore for the money for shareholders, but for the good of society. Uh, somebody at that level saying that is of course, very important. And we saw in a number of top uh, business schools in the world, including in the United States, uh, new, new students with, who got their diploma wanted to do a sort of a Hippocratic oath. Uh, we, will do no, we will do good. We will do no bad to society in the future. Uh, all that is, I think, rather important, and uh, 
we have to try to help it, to help this movement. And uh, certainly, SOL is one of the organizations which has some capacity to contribute to this evolution. Thank you. Okay. Now we are starting with uh, Professor Christoph Mandel. Um, thank you very much, Antti, for, as we say in Germany, for the flowers. Uh, good morning, everyone. I have to apologize a little bit at the beginning because you just have now got news to the French way of speaking English. Now you have to switch a little bit to the German way of speaking English. So a system is called complex when its future sensitively depends on the present condition. But the implications are quite profound. Because if you think of it, what present thinking in economic theory is, is that we always tend to go to some equilibrium. So whatever you do in difference, there will always, always be an equilibrium, and that equilibrium will be the same no matter if there is a minor or larger change in uh, the present conditions. But that's not so. The implication is pretty profound. The consequences of complexity, and by complexity I just mean this idea of sensitive influence of the present condition on the future behavior. The consequences of complexity is, first of all, that longer range forecasts are impossible. They are impossible. No matter what economists say, no matter what meteorologists say, no matter what climat climatologists say about, you know, for example, how the weather will be in uh, 100 years from now, that's just impossible to do. Accurate longer range forecasts are impossible because the tiniest change of present condition creates a different future in the long run. The tiniest change of present condition creates a different future in the long run. The only thing that's obvious about it is that we never know the futures that don't come about. Now, what is the message in here? The message is very simple. If you live in a complex world, and you might, you might want to believe that, but uh, that's just a suggestion. The first thing is managing complexity means perceive the patterns that you live in. Don't try to predict, but try to perceive the patterns that you live in. Are you living in this kind of world that goes up and down? Uh, can you change something about that? Uh, are you living in a world of shifting the burden or some other things? Recurring themes that you think are recurring. They are not true for everyone and they are not true for every place in the world. But perceive the patterns that you live in. Accept the always true truths. There is no way trying to change laws of physics. But recognize the truth by repetition and the doubt by repetition truths for what they are. And be aware that that's a kind of truth that is not an always truth, but the way it's communicated, the way it's said, and so on and so forth. We had a recent thing, you probably read it in the paper as well. I think the Slovakian guy said, the euro is dead. Now, that's a funny thing to do. Uh, and it, but it's not, a, a, people think they're telling always truths, truths, but most of the time people, particularly politicians, say either something that is true by repetition or that is something that belongs to the category of doubt by repetition. And finally, make a conscious choice between enacting, reacting, preacting, and interacting. Welcome to the first Solvies conference that are great and honor to have you. Thank you so much for being here. You're very with welcome. Us. Transforming the shifts the systems that shape how we live. There's a quote at the top from a man in Chile. He's a uh, 
a mentor to many of us. He's a very famous biologist. I'm going to read the whole quote. I didn't have room to put it there, so I'll read it to you. This man is a very famous biologist. His name is Humberto Maturana. I want to contribute to a cultural change. I want to contribute to a work of art in the domain of human existence. I want to contribute to evoke a manner of coexistence in which love, mutual respect, honesty, and social responsibility arise spontaneously from living instant by instant and by which we realize harmonizing the anthroposphere and the biosphere, the world of human life and the larger world of living systems. If you now advance the slide, you'll see these critical areas where the development needs to occur in education, in business, in development, the exemplars that are forming the basis for the future of Seoul come from rural development, urban youth at risk in the northern countries where we have tremendous problems in our cities, and through using digital inclusion as a strategy for reaching millions of young people around the world, and obviously health and health care. So by transforming these systems, we can change how we live. The basic idea we have for the future of Seoul today is called the Academy for Systemic Change. It's a way to make the knowledge in these different sectors more and more available to everybody. The word global has two meanings. It obviously means around the world, global. But it also means everywhere. Start here. Start on the problems you're working on now. Start looking how to apply the three-legged stool to the problems you're working on now and begin collaborating together. That's the basics of all soil. The basic of the soil idea is nurturing learning communities, people working together to bring about change that they could never bring about by themselves. So I'm sorry for going a little bit over. Ante and I thought you could recover the basics of your schedule. Um, so Ante, I'll leave it up to you. If you want to take a few minutes for questions, I don't mind. But I also think uh, we're about 20 minutes late now, so we probably should end soon. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much. <laughs>